Hi, I'm Greg Dell here with attorney Rachel Alters and we're going to talk to you about Hartford Disability Appeals, kind of some do's and don'ts and what you should expect if you need to file an appeal. Now Rachel, I know you've handled a couple hundred appeals with Hartford. Um, that number is going to increase greatly because we know that recently this year in 2018, Hartford bought the long-term disability division of Aetna. Right. So that's going to be really interesting. I know you've started to see how that's going to play out because Aetna had their own techniques and Hartford has their special techniques. So mm -hmm. this video is really geared for the claimant who's already had their claim denied by Hartford and they're considering um, filing appeal or they obviously have a need to file an appeal. So let's talk about some things that they should expect when filing this appeal and why it's so important to get going here to file a strong appeal. Okay. So what is, why is the appeal so important basically, you know, why should you have help and really put in a strong appeal? Well, the most important reason why you need to put in a strong appeal is with Hartford, you only get one shot in an appeal. And what the appeal essentially is, is it's basically your trial in front of the judge. Because once you get to court, if an appeal is denied, all the administrative, um, the judge sees is the administrative record. So they don't get any new testimony. You can't file anything new. They don't get to meet the claimant. So everything you want to show the judge as to why the insurance company was arbitrary and capricious needs to be in that appeal. And if it's not, then you're, you're out of luck. Right. I mean, a lot of people do call us after they did their own appeal and we're able to help them. Sure. But those people are at a significant disadvantage compared to the ones that contact an attorney beforehand to do the appeal. And like you said, there is no second chance. And we often give the example that someone could turn in their appeal, get a decision, and God forbid the next day lose their leg in a catastrophic accident, mm -hmm. and the court cannot consider that new evidence because the appeal record is closed. Right. So that being said, you know, it's very important. People understand you have to submit a phenomenal appeal. What do you think is the most important element in an appeal against Hartford? Um, there are a lot of important elements, but I think one of the most important element is doctor support and to make sure that you have really good written doctor support that supports your inability to work, whether it's in your own occupation or if the definition has changed to any occupation, um, that your restrictions and limitations are supported and um, that you have maybe a good voc rehab also expert to cooperate that. That's really important in a good appeal. What do you think is special about what you're able to do in helping a claimant present their medical support versus what a claimant could do on their own? Well, we know what the insurance companies are looking for because we do this all day long. So we know that they're looking for a specific language. They want to see that the medical records coincide with what the doctors are writing in their attending physician statements. So they don't want to just see that there's a, a great letter from your doctor, but for you know six months previous, they're not writing anything in the record. So when you hire us, we try to ensure that your doctors are documenting properly along the way and that their attending physician statements or their letters that support your disability are, they, they coincide, they support each other, and they're very strong. Now, you, you mentioned the fact that obviously when someone hires us, you mentioned this six-month period, you know, that the, you want the records, not just the report that a doctor may generate to match. But I guess that's the reason why, well, one of the reasons we take advantage of the fact that they give you 180 days to file an appeal. Right. And during that time, I know I often encourage my clients to go back to the treating doctor or other doctors two or three visits so that we can continue to build the medical records and get them documented better than they may have been in the past. Exactly. But, but what do you do in the situation where many claimants call us and they only have 60 days or 90 days left to do an appeal and we can't, you know, we can't really change the medical records that much. So how do you work to get a, to get great attending physician support? Well, we speak with the doctors so we can set up phone conferences with the doctors and speak to them and explain to them the importance of what they need to put in their in their medical records and then put into the attending physician statement and we can actually help the doctors prepare those attending physician statements and we review them before they go to the insurance carrier. And a lot of the mistakes that happen with claimants is that they give these attending physician statements to their physicians, the doctors fill them out, they send them directly into the insurance company, the claimant has no idea what the doctor wrote and the claim gets denied because 
because the doctors fill them out improperly because they're not really trained to fill these out. They're trained, you know, to treat patients. Right. So and the that's other thing part is of our role. the other thing is that often, like many of these claimants know, they have that standard form that's one or two pages attending uh -huh. physician statement. And throughout the years, we've built our own. Um, attending physician statements that we basically customize to the specific medical condition, to the to the um, job qualifications of that person's job, or maybe just to an any occupation right. type job to guide the doctor to make sure that the insurance company gets all the information that they're looking for. Like you said, we know exactly what they're looking for. Therefore, we have to have the doctor hit the buzzwords and hit the important things. So. Unfortunately, what we often see too is that claimants don't know how to speak to their doctors in order to get this appropriate support or right. at first without the involvement of an attorney to help, the doctors don't want to cooperate. Right. So I think that a lot of people sometimes say, well, my doctor is going to get scared if you have a lawyer. And I think my view has been 95% of the time is that the doctors appreciate the fact that now you have a professional helping you, basically guiding the doctor, telling them you know, what they can or can't do, what basically what needs to be done to help the claimant as opposed right. to a claimant who may go in not really sure of what they're doing and the doctor's kind of like, look, just tell me what I need to do and if I want to help you, I will. Now, unfortunately, right. you have doctors who don't want to help. Correct. And when that happens, we have to help guide the, the claimants to other doctors. Sure. And that becomes a big problem when you don't have a supporting physician. So, that's a whole other animal, something that someone should call us about to discuss, but we have to work around that way because it's not that your doctor doesn't believe that you're disabled. It's that I don't want to deal with an insurance company. Right. They, well, that they scare them away because right. they badger them so much and they bother them. So the doctors say, I don't have time for this. I need to treat my patients. I can't sit and fill out paperwork every two to three months. And so they intentionally scare away the doctors so that the claimants have no support. All right. So you yeah. talked about the single most important thing is medical support. Another thing that a claimant would never do on their own that we'll touch on here briefly is a vocational report right. and, and talking, what is that? Why can that become important in an appeal? It's very important in appeal because we, we hire experts who do this all the time. And what the vocational expert will do is they take the claimant's job description. They look at the medical records. They look at, um, you know, the, the ONET, which is, you know, the um, Dictionary of Dictionary Occupational, occupational titles. titles, is which, you know, which these insurance carriers go by as to whether you can do your own job or any job. And they take all of that information and they produce a report stating whether you, whether or not you're able or capable of doing your job. And it's very important because they look at the specific job description, what you're able to do, if you have to sit for long periods, stand for long periods, you know, if you have a physical job where you're lifting, and they take all of the medical records and look at, at, you know, your MRI reports and things that have to do with your health to determine whether or not you're capable. And they're usually pretty long and they're, it's, a, you know, a strong support of the appeal on top of the medical support. Okay. They also often cost a few thousand dollars to get a report like yes. that since we handle all of our appeals on a contingency basis where the mm -hmm. claimants don't pay anything unless we win. Right. It's also an expense that many claimants don't want to risk because they're in a financial bind as it is because their claim has been denied and right. often many claimants because they can't afford it don't have the opportunity to put in a vocational report. Also these vocational reports take time. Um, to do. Often we're waiting 60 to 90 days to get one, so you really need to plan ahead. We can't just call someone and say, I need a vocational report right. tomorrow. Right. So um, the, the last thing we'll talk about is how we help to craft personal statements. Mm -hmm. And basically, in my opinion, since we don't have a trial because ERISA doesn't allow for that, that's basically our client's day in court, the opportunity to take the stand and say, this is how I feel. This is why I can't work. This is right. what my day is like. And when you're the claimant living that every day, you can't necessarily express it without somebody who where it's our job to bring out really what a day in the life is like and explain to that person. Because at the end of the day, there's a human being. It's not a machine that's reading right. the appeal. And if they feel for you or have an understanding of what you're really doing and they don't have um, video surveillance that contradicts that or a statement from some random person who says no that's not true or your social media profile says different right. than what you're saying then that is your day and while it may not work on the appeal it will have an impact on a judge down the road sure who's gonna look at the file so that's another thing that we often spend a lot of time crafting um, also statements from a family member uh -huh. past co-workers those kinds of things so 
These are some of the most important appeal, you know, elements that are important for a Hartford appeal. Really, they apply to just about any appeal with any company, but mm -hmm. Hartford's very specific because they're very detailed and um, have certain requirements that we know about. So if you have an appeal with Hartford, no matter where you live in the country, Rachel, myself, any of our attorneys are available to provide you with a free initial consultation. We look forward to the opportunity to speak with you.